Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the fuel and the air trains uh, to look at how are we going to control, and then a little later on we look at the cross-limiting controls. That's already been covered in theory, uh, but we want to actually see what the elements are. So this is the natural gas header coming in from outside from Portis. Um, comes down, we've got it locked closed right now because the boiler is shut down. Um, goes through a strainer, from there it comes down to a regulator which is going to knock the pressure down to uh, 25 PSIG. Um, gas pressure is coming in at about 60. Uh, then we go through to a Daniel Senior Orifice Changer, which you guys have all seen before. And the Orifice Changer in here is monitoring the gas flow. Goes up to a flow boss. The flow boss is actually uh, getting the differential pressure across here and calculating what the flow is. It's uh, okay. And then we've got the temperature sitting on the downstream side here. We know what the pressure was constant. The gas comes up, goes through this line here, and goes into a, a turbine flow meter. This is the one that we're actually going to use for control. It's uh, far more accurate. It has a much higher turndown ratio. Uh, the orifice plate over there, no matter how you cut it, it's a three or four to one turndown ratio. Back to our flow meter. Whereas the turbine flow meter's got a hundred to one turndown ratio. The uh, turbine flow meter is, we're also measuring the temperature of the gas and we are measuring the pressure of the gas. And that goes into this camera um, uh, flow computer that actually computes the gas flow temperature and pressure compensated. So we get high turndown plus dead accuracy. And then that gas comes along on this line here, following my laser, and goes down here, and then goes through. There's a gas cock right there for if we're working on the boiler and we've got to isolate it, we would pull and lock that close. There's gas pressure coming in, and it looks like we've regulated that down to 20 PSI. Okay, I said 25 earlier, and that was what the original spec was, but we're now down at about 20. Um, and that would have been adjusted during our initial combustion and commissioning of this boiler. Um, factory said that we need to have at least 25 pounds. We found that 20 was perfect for the range over which this boiler is operated. Uh, from there, we've got a gas pressure switch. If the gas pressure is too low, our burner management system is going to knock us out. Okay. Then we go into our... Then we go into our maximum valves, which right now this one is shut. They're both shut because the boiler is down, so you can see the word shut on there, maybe. Um, and uh, this little line right here is for testing of the valve. It's a bubble test to check to see if the valves are holding closed. The gasket will do that. Then, just down at that, there's another valve, but between the two valves, there's a takeoff here, which goes to a solenoid valve. That is part of the double block and bleed. You've got an upstream block valve, the maxim. Let's go over the other side here. You've got a downstream valve, which is the maxim. And then between the two is the vent valve. So in its current situation, the blocks are both closed, the vent is wide open. As soon as we go for light off, What's going to happen is the vent is going to close, the upstream block is going to open, and the downstream block will open, but at a controlled rate. It's hydraulically or well, pneumatically controlled inside. It can be either hydraulic or pneumatic. This particular one is hydraulic because I don't see an airline coming to it. Um, and uh, so you don't want to bang the gas on there right away. So you can actually see this one, the shutter moving on it and opening. From there, we come down to another gas pressure switch, which could take us out if the gas pressure is too low. Okay, um, and then from there, we're going to the modulating control valve, which for light off purposes, I think is set around 8% open. And there's actually, on the back of it, I don't know how well you can see back here, but there's actually a position switch. And the position switch is looking to prove that the gas 
valve is down at light off position, which it currently is. From there, we go through another um, shutoff valve, and this micro switch is part of the burner management system. When we are on oil, that guy has to be in an open condition. Okay. Um, okay, so then the gas comes through this line here, and this line, when we're doing maintenance on the boiler and stuff, we get everything locked up, but we actually take the line out. The line is physically removed, so there's no chance that gas is going to get in there if somebody was working inside the boiler and they're going to get gas with natural gas. So we guarantee it by the fact we've removed the line. So the gas is coming up on this line here into this ring. Okay, and you'll see on this ring that there are takeoffs all the way around it. And the takeoffs are actually two spuds that are going in there. So there are nozzles with uh, orifices in them and multiple outlets on them. And these are kind of neat the way they're set up. Um, then there is a, another takeoff right here, this one, which is been preset and locked in position. We did that during commissioning. This is actually putting uh, gas into the um, into the um, minimum flame burner. There's a stabilizing flame, which is in the center of the burner, and that's what that is for. So it never will go down to zero flame. These guys, these spuds, you can actually take and rotate them. And so if you look at them, we've got a, a union sitting on them, and there's actually a calibration dial right back there. Okay, the calibration dial. And we've actually marked where they need to be. So we rotate those to uh, establish the length over diameter ratio for the flame. You don't want the flame to hit the back of the boiler. You don't want the flame to hit the walls on the side. What's unique is Canadian made and patented burner you got that Canadian made and patented burner is set up so that you can actually do this on the fly. So the gas fitter and I, while we were going through the combustion setup, and actually he's a combustion engineer, when we were going through the setup, we were loosening these just a little tiny bit and then adjusting them to get that flame shape just right at high fire. And then watched it when we came down to low fire to make sure it was still stable. And that's where we adjusted the stabilizing flame to make sure that we had a nice stable flame at low fire and then at high fire the flame was not impinging on the walls it was not impinging on the back wall so side walls and back walls this burner also has dual scanners in it so maybe i'll go around the other side so we can see the second scanner well actually it's up here this is one scanner and this is the other scanner this scanner on the top is looking at the inner flame, that common flame that I was talking about, and then this guy is looking at the outer flame. And uh, they both have to be satisfied, otherwise the burner will shut off. So later when we do the light off sequence, you will see that there's two scanners, two little green lights on here. And when these guys are both happy that we've got a, a good solid flame, they will allow the burner to continue to operate. This red thing that's sitting in here is for the oil gun. And we will take a look at this guy later when we're switching over to oil. And uh, what's really neat about it, it's got this little spring that's sitting right there. And that's a flapper gate so that when you pull the oil gun out, you don't get a flame coming back into your face. Because we're going to show you in another video that we can actually switch from gas to oil or oil to gas on the fly. We will have both planes in the boiler at the same time. So the boiler would actually be hot and live in there as we are extracting the, the oil gun back out. And so this protects us from blowback and that's what it is. It's a blowback uh, device. Okay. So now we've done the gas side going into the boiler. The next part is to do the air side. So. We've got a four-strap fan. And the four-strap fan discharges down into the wind box. So this section, all the way across here and back up, is the wind box. And if you come to the side, you'll see that it is quite deep. It goes all the way to the burner face. There's an access door to get into the actual uh, wind box itself so that you can see what's going on. In addition to that, we are actually going to monitor the oxygen level in the wind box. 
And you might question, why would you do that? Well, the reason we wanted to do that is that we have the opportunity to add flue gas recirculation into the burner, and by mixing the flue gas with the uh, air coming in, it lowers the overall flame temperature. And in doing that, it lowers the production of NOx. And so this is a means to reduce NOx. We can put up to 10% flue gas recirculation in the burner. So the Windbox O2 analyzer takes its sample right from here. And we've got a paramagnetic oxygen analyzer measuring that. If you're running no FGR, absolutely none, perfectly sealed off, that's going to be sitting at 20.9%. But as you begin to introduce FGR, that oxygen level is going to go down, and it could be typically down around 19, 19.5, 19.8% uh, oxygen in the uh, combustion air that's going in, the mixture of FGR, flue gas recirculation, and combustion air. So back out here, you now look at the air inlet, way up at the top of it, there is a, a muffler to try and reduce the noise. From there, and I'm going to move back a little bit more, so look where my laser is pointing, there's kind of a V there, and there's another V over this side. That is actually forming a venturi. And in the middle of it, there is a keto tube. And the beauty of this is that this produces a tremendous differential without creating a high permanent air loss. Most boilers typically run around an inch to two inches of water column across the airflow element. This airflow element generates 10 inches of water column. That's 10 times what I've seen on some boilers or five times what I've seen on good boilers. Differential. And when we go to characterize that 20 points, square root extract it and characterize it, uh, it's very difficult. But with such a high differential on here, we really minimize any errors. And as a result, we get an extremely high turndown ratio on this boiler. So the first damper right there is the air damper. So it's controlling the air coming in. And the second one right here is the flue gas recirculation. So where the flue, flue gas recirculation comes from, and we'll just come back a little bit. The flue gas is going coming out of the economizer and going up the stack. Right there, there's a takeoff, which comes all the way around the back of the boiler and comes here. We are measuring the air or the blue gas recirculation flow uh, with a venturi at that point, and then from there, we're measuring its temperature on that temperature sensor, and we come down to the damper, which is now going to emit FGR, mixing with fresh combustion air into the fan, and the fan is the mixer. Think back to consistency control. And just like we controlled consistency in pulp stock, we were we had to go through a pump to mix it and get a good measurement. And that's exactly what we're doing back here. We are bringing the combustion air in, bringing the flue gas in, mixing it with the fan, and then down into the wind box and into the boiler. During purge, the code says that we have to purge not only the boiler, We've also got to purge that FGR line. So during purge, this damper and this damper will go, both go wide open for 180 seconds. And at the 180 seconds or three minutes, we will have pulled fresh air down through here and bled it back out through the FGR takeoff through this whole line and cleaned it out of any combustible gases that might be inside there. Um, that basically covers all of our airflow. Next step, we're going to go upstairs and look at the two transmitters that are actually measuring the FGR flow and the airflow. Okay. Okay. So we're up on top of the boiler. And here's the flue gas recirculation line right there. And there's the, the venturi. And off that venturi, we're measuring upstream pressure and we're measuring pressure in the throat. And those go to this transmitter that's right over top of my head. This is a 3051 SMD, which is a smart uh, multivariable transmitter. Um, and this guy is calibrated to measure that flow. Um, and then on top of that, we're measuring the temperature to 
do another compensation on it as required in the DCS. And then the flue gas comes down through and you can now see the damper drive right there. Okay, that's the damper drive. It's a finish roll drive with a DVC uh, position on it. And then out the back end of it, there are switches to prove the position for open and closed on that damper. Now they go directly to the burner management system. The burner management system doesn't take any information from the DCS. It has to do it all on its own, and so therefore it has its own switches. The airflow is coming down through here. We are measuring the air temperature, okay, which is actually wired back into the multivariable. Um, sorry, I'm wrong. This is the air temperature for the multivariable. Okay. Um, and then this is the differential pressure across that airflow element that I was talking about downstairs. You can see the angle on here. So picture the air coming in, getting throttled into a venturi, and then having an annular stuffed right down its throat. And that will create very high differential coming into this transmitter. Again, a 3051 SMDT transmitter. So a smart multivariable transmitter. Um, the inches, you don't calibrate it with inches of water column. It's actually a, a computer using a program uh, called Engineering Assistant that you have to use to do all the configuration for this transmitter. Okay, I think we're done.